And we are recording. Welcome to IPFS All Hands Call for 3rd of February 2020. Uh, we got people on our gallery. We got agenda. Today we'll be talking about Infura, Infura's IPFS tech stack and offerings. And I think I won't uh, take much more of your time uh, and just uh, give a voice to Sean. Cool, thank you very much, Lidl. Um, really happy to join the call today. Um, quick background about me, um, I joined Infura on December 2nd, so about two months in as the developer relations lead. So I came from a company in Ethereum called MakerDAO, where I did integration engineering, basically have a background in DevOps and getting into the distributed and blockchain side of things. And what I want to talk about today is uh, what Infura is, uh, what we offer with uh, IPFS, and show some recent examples from a couple of hackathon projects that use us, uh, how we contribute to open source, and then get into a little bit of the architecture behind the Infura IPFS stack. Um, one, I'm going to take uh, questions at the end. Uh, one morning, again, uh, since I just joined, I may not be able to answer everything uh, to the technical rigor that we'd like to share. So I'm, I'll be taking notes on the questions you ask and then posting in our community call or uh, community forum uh, in-depth answers, in -depth answers to anything that uh, is wants to be learned about. Um, so let me. I have a, it's a series of, I guess, websites to go over. So if I can share my screen, that would be ideal. Um, and please interrupt at any time with uh, questions or anything that you'd like to know. Um, cool, so getting into it. Uh, this is, we mainly work off the HTTP, API. So obviously this is the ActiveFest docs. Um, we offer a subset of the uh, IPFS commands. And so here they are on our docs here. Um, you can see the different, uh, it's mainly around pinning. So uh, basically you can sign up through us and then add any IPFS content that you want and it will uh, we're just a, a pinning service. And as you can see, we don't offer as many. Um, we'll get into it later, but we're working on a 2020 huge overhaul of the IPFS offerings, and we're going to get a lot more API functions available. Um, here's the example, ipfs.infura.io. Hello. This is the, uh, just a hello world example. This is what a pinning link looks like with our service. And uh, some quick uh, how we contribute to open source. Here is what we use internally as a way to transfer data between IPFS nodes and storage. It's a command line tool. Um, it's actually, it works really well. Uh, you can just uh, move data around between different uh, servers and uh, we use it internally for our own uh, purposes and move around. Uh, another one, uh, sometimes seeing uh, getting data from IPFS and how it's working uh, is a little harder. So we built a Datadog plugin that has tracing and you can uh, check it out here. Um, so, uh, all right, here's a fun thing. So just recently, uh, there's a Ethereum project called Gitcoin, which has different hackathons. Um, we participated one as a sponsor uh, just recently and I wanted to see what people could build with our IPFS projects. And uh, I can talk about Gitcoin more in detail too if anyone has questions, but basically there was uh, six project submissions, um, two really cool ones that I wanna note. Here's one where content creators can upload anything to IPFS and then sign it with a Ethereum project called Uport where it ties your basically control over an Ethereum address to uh, the registration. And so you actually can register them in the Ethereum network based on 
uh, these content uploads. Um, I thought that was really cool. Um, another one was, again, on Ethereum, there's a open protocol for wallets called Wallet Connect. And so here is a hackathon project where they use IPFS to hold data and basically combines it with uh, your Wallet Connect uh, persona is the controller of these FUFS uh, contents. Uh, thought that was really cool. Um, then, uh, so getting into how Infura has the architecture. So going way back to when it first came out, um, let me minimize this. So it started out very, very simple. Um, this is the simplest version. Basically, they have a, a load balancer. Um, the RPC API would hit these uh, servers. And uh, for content retrieval, it's basically, this is hitting the uh, URLs you saw earlier, where it's uh, inferior URLs for getting content. And then this was interacting through the command line with our API. And they both hit these uh, production nodes that are just running some code base. And so this had problems in the first, in 2017, when we launched this, uh, within a year, we had over 2 million items pinned uh, through the service. And we had a very, I guess, naive or first draft at, at this. And we were running into problems with uh, stale data. Um, we weren't, uh, I guess, garbage collecting or what we call banishing any data. And so the next version of the architecture has a bit more complexity. Uh, the, the designation of something called special traffic that basically hit a node before going to another IPFS load balancer. Uh, basically, just this just added a, it's called an IPFS spoke load balancer. And uh, this probably took us to uh, late 2018. This is what the architecture looked like. And again, it, we were scaling or serving more traffic than this architecture uh, allowed. And so we had a, a new version, which is, which is what I'll mostly talk about here. And so this is the architecture as of early 2019. And so basically we have what's called this IPFS proxy, uh, basically a, a large repo, just a, a single code base, which uh, can do all these things. And so basically, um, move through it, basically we, so IPNS is the, uh, it was a protocol name service. And so we have what's called an IPNS tracker and then a pinless tracker. So for, for each user, we keep a track of what's stored, what blocks are being stored, um, everything around each specific user. And then what we like to, so our API, API is designed where it's meant to act like a local node. Like if you're familiar with interacting with uh, your local storage, we like the API to be very, very similar or identical. So we don't have uh, custom API calls. We have pretty much just everything, a subset of what's in the uh, FPFS docs themselves. Um, if there are, I'm taking, I guess, input if, if you guys would like to see any custom APIs and custom commands and things like that, uh, we'd be interested to hear about that. But right now, it's it looks exactly like a local node. And so, uh, I guess going on, yeah, we, so the go up uh, that's the one you're used to, the uh, public go up FFS client. Uh, we work with that and basically, this uh, mono repo, we call it, uh, almost like sits on top of it and then interacts with it. And then, of course, uh, we use S3, Amazon S3, 
S3 for our storage. And so, uh, yeah, I think that's everything about this. Um, here's the full of what we're working on eventually allowing um, in the next version. So everything you see here is obviously a, a lot more than the API I showed in the beginning currently supports, but uh, that's what we're working towards. Um, pretty much all these commands would be uh, usable in a, a version. I don't have a release date to announce, but we're working on uh, getting all this uh, into our API. Um, no, I, I went through that fairly quickly. Uh, I'm missing, I can't read the chat, so if there's any questions through the chat, please uh, let me know. I had a quick right. question just about kind of the, the user flow of someone who's, who's coming through here and wants Infura to back up their stuff. Do you spin up a mm -hmm. new Go IPFS node for each one of those? Um, how do you kind of segment or understand the, um, you, I mean, obviously you can track what content they're pinning, but when you get requests for that data back, are you also tracking how much bandwidth or, or other things um, are related to a particular user um, as part of your, your service? Or is it just kind of, um, it's on the pinning side and not on the retrieval side that you pay attention to that? Um, I, so there's the, yeah, the pinning versus the retrieval. Um, we track the user's pinning. We, I can, I can look that up. I wrote that question down, but I don't believe we track the retrieval side. Um, we pretty much infer as a philosophy where uh, uh, a purpose of not tracking users, we just track the minimum amount to, that's technically necessary in order to uh, have our services, but we don't track uh, users or try to identify things or uh, sell data in any way. And so for the tracking side, going back, the we used to have a, sh a shared storage solution for like all the users in one S3, basically uh, buckets, but going forward, it's going to be unique to each uh, user that's pinning. So every user will have their own uh, storage. And then on the retrieval side, um, sorry, you said it was, was that answering your question? What I'm hearing is that kind of you, you will have a, a separate node and separate storage for each user. And then on the retrieval side, you'll redirect that user to the bit of storage that, that's for them in particular? Um, well, on the retrieval side, it would come from that storage. So the hash to specific content would always go to some user's uh, bucket. I guess I'm not sure why the retrieval or pinning would be separate. It would all, it would all come from. Uh, yeah, my, I guess my question is like, if we're all pinning the same thing, does it particularly go to my storage when I want to retrieve it, or uh, would it go to anyone's? Uh, the there is a deduplication process to it, so the so pinning. All right, so. Um, I don't believe so. Um, I, I think if there's each unique object being pinned would be, uh, I guess, because you can take them down. I think it'd be unique to each user. So there, it would be repinned in your own private storage or personal storage. Um, I'll uh, have a more in-depth answer. I'll, I'll post a link to uh, the community site we have and I'll uh, have that Q&A. Uh, I believe uh, Johnny uh, got the question. Okay. Yeah, I'm just curious if uh, 
the Ethereum nodes are the, um, queryable using IPLD Git. So the multi codecs for Ethereum transactions and blocks are those stored? I know. I think uh, it mostly has a plugin for Go IPFS. Uh -huh. um, I actually didn't know about that. Uh, what is it called? It's IPF. So it's IPLD and a pletter of linked data that you can um, traverse uh, nodes in uh, multi codec for Ethereum transactions and blocks. Okay, um, that's actually the first I've heard of that. Um, I can find out if we support it, but I don't, I don't believe we use that anywhere. Um, and that would be, so on top of, the, right now we have the Ethereum API, right? But, so this would be an IPFS Right, so this version. would be it, uh, just, if you have something in IPLD and you have a uh, transaction in Ethereum, you can actually use the multi-codec in IPLD to natively link a hash base linked addressing in IPLD to include that transaction in your, your node. And all right, I okay, like cool. to say that as of last year, there was um, support for it as a plugin for the Go IPFS. And but I've, I've lost track as far as where it, where it is. That's not, yeah, that, that'd be, that's not very useful in what, what support. Um, and Steven, do you know? I can look. Uh, no, there's currently, it's not currently built into Go IPFS. Uh, yes, there's still a plugin. I haven't tried it in a very long time. Um, but yeah, basically you would treat Ethereum blocks as normal IPLD blocks. You'd be able to fetch them over BitSwap from other peers to support IPFS uh, and then traverse them like anything else in IPFS. Uh, but yeah, you'd have to install the plugin. All right, cool. Okay. Um, and then the last thing I want to bring up before having more Q&A is we are uh, just a short plug for a, we are hiring for a Golang or Python IPFS engineer. Um, it's on our open roles. And if you or anyone you know would like to join us and help us out in building some really cool IPFS architecture, uh, yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, and uh, yeah, we're fully remote. And so we have that. Um, I'll stop the share there. and answer any questions or uh, we're, we're actually like, so we're in the process of really making a new IPFS version. Um, the, the diagram I just showed was from about a year ago and the new one will look similar, but uh, they'll offer a ton more, I guess, functions and features. And so if there's anything uh, the community would like to see or would be really useful that's missing from the current providers or pinning services where uh, we'd love to hear any sort of ideas or feedback you have on ours. I got a question. Um, you mentioned you mentioned garbage collection briefly. Uh, this is something we're always curious about on our end. How, how do you guys handle garbage collection uh, at the scale you do? If you do it all, um, there. Let me. So there is a. So what we just kind of call it like the banisher, which so obviously users can uh, take down content that they pin. Um, the if there are, I think that so if one. If a piece of information isn't being accessed, um, I think if the user leaves it, uh, actually, don't I don't want to say anything incorrect. So I need to. We can write a some in depth details about how we garbage collect and care about things, but uh, yeah, sorry, Matt, I don't have a the great answer for you right now. We That's we don't good. do. We don't do too much. I don't think we do very in-depth garbage collection, but it's a, 
I know we do some, so I'll get the answer for that for you. Awesome. And any other questions? I don't like we got a lot of folks today, so and in case you are like raising hands or something, just type in chat because I don't see everyone and I'm trying to skip like jump between screens, but my screen is very small. I, I was interested in the, the mono repo piece of the diagram that looked as far as I could tell was like the front end to a request flow. The first thing it hit was the thing labeled IPFS proxy mono repo. Does that was that referring to a bunch of IPFS like processes that share a repo or what what was the what which repo was mono in that? Uh, so that's a a little bit of a quirk in our naming. Um, just it's a I guess it comes from the term like uh, a large single repository. Um, yeah, uh, it's it's basically the a large code base that handles everything around IPFS. Um, it, I think the name itself leads to you to believe that there's a certain project, but it's basically a, a single large code base that handles everything around IPFS. So um, it's, refer it's referring to a Git repo, not a IPFS repo, for example. Uh, correct. Yeah, it's a. Okay. It's an inter internally. It, uh, it's a private code base. To soon for a, a for on GitHub. Yeah. Understood. Uh, I got a question from chat from Andrew. Uh, what have been the biggest IPFS pain points for you so far? Um, I can. So basically, there was. Some initial pain points around, uh, so we are, we're first like from the very beginning, our, the first architecture, we had a single node that allowed unbounded writes on a public endpoint, and so eventually that would hit a, eventually make that unusable. So there's over two million items in the permanent storage on that first node, and it basically we led to us trying to do stricter rate, rate limiting and uh, making sure that uh, offering better service there. Um, so that was a problem that was an early, uh, a lot of features around that was initial. Um, the eventually added things like, some things like user authentication, uh, node clustering, uh, support for a wider amount of the wider subset of the FFS RPC API. Um, and then right now, uh, probably the biggest issue and is something that basically since we're relaying through the command line, we're relaying different users uh, requests um, by I think there's a there's a issue because we so something ethereum added was a way to act on behalf of another user if basically a relaying signed transactions and so we're working on a way to see relay signed basically if a user wants to interact with their ipfs content the pin content or yeah interact with it in any way um, some of the, some of the things we can do on behalf of them are limited and so we're working possibly uh, in a PR or some way of working with the Go IPFS client and allowing things like that where users could it's like either have signed transactions or sign off on a certain subset of uh, interactions that we could take on their behalf. Um, and I think that's one of the, because right now we, there's definitely pain points around things we would like to do and help people like on behalf of users, but uh, technically prevented from doing that. And so that is one thing. Okay, we got two and a half minutes and there's 
another question uh, from Andrew. Um, I don't think it, it wouldn't mean storing users' private keys. It'd be basically having users sign messages and having the IPFS network able to recognize that. Um, it might, yeah, it would probably require some sort of change to IPFS itself, but uh, that's just something that, yeah, we'd like to talk to maybe protocol labs about and have a discussion, but yeah. Okay, um, I think we got the time for our last question from Molly. <laughs> It's the last one. Thanks, Lytle. Um, my question was kind of looking, looking at the, the stuff that's coming in the ecosystem. I was curious if you guys have, have started looking into or exploring Filecoin in any way as kind of a, a storage solution or um, kind of additional offering you might pursue. Um, I, can, I can ask our head, basically our head developer on IFRS and Mikhail. And so uh, I've talked with him about Filecoin. Um, I'm not sure how we could in integrate it. Um, um, if there's any, are there any Filecoin developers on the call or are you yourself on Molly? But uh, we would, yeah, be happy to talk in ways about how we could integrate with you guys uh, with Filecoin. But uh, as of right now, I'm not sure what that would look like. Um, I know what Falcon is and everything, but uh, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not I a Falcon developer. Um, I'm on the IPFS side, but um, something something I know that's been talked about, um, I think with Matt and with others is um, just a, a way of being able to have a pinning service that backs up to Filecoin for a more kind of distributed backend um, and then offers interfaces on the IPFS side for pinning content that then ends up stored by, by miners in the Filecoin network. Um, and so that was the kind of interesting space that I wasn't sure whether you guys have started um, digging into yet. Uh, gotcha. So basically, like a new storage, file, people can earn Filecoin by having a new storage. I mean, I guess we could act as a Filecoin hoster and earn it that way as like a business, or yeah, we could offer like a client that people could use to storage, but I guess, uh, yeah, I need to learn more, but yeah, I think that'd be a, a useful service. Yeah. All right. No more questions. Thank you so much, uh, Sean, for coming to uh, ActiveFest Weekly, sharing uh, updates on Infura, and hopefully we'll see each other again at some point. Yeah. Thank you. Doing another check-in. I think that's it for today. Thank you, everyone. See you next week.